Greetings, everybody. This is Paul from Paul's Passing Thoughts uh, dot com, and um, we have been doing a series on Blog Talk Radio uh, dot com uh, forward slash False Reformation. You can go there and see that we've been doing a series on the Heidelberg Disputation, which is the foundational document of the Protestant Reformation. Everything that we see in contemporary Christianity today and evangelicalism in general can be explained through that document. It really flows um, from there. And uh, people who don't connect intellectually directly with that document, thoroughly understand it, nevertheless function according to the ideology of the document. Uh, why is that? Because, because um, the Protestant Reformation uh, was founded on the Heidelberg Disputation, and out of that ideology and doctrine came certain traditions especially in the way that we do church, okay, so to speak. So basically, even though there's an intellectual and ideological disconnect um, from the original document, a lot of Christianity today functions uh, for all practical purposes in the same way because the the traditions of how we worship together and, again, do church um, dictates outcome, all right? So, um, basically, what we need in today's Christianity is a complete tearing down of the traditions and a rebuilding of something that is connected to um, a grammatical interpretation of the Bible. All right. So you can uh, go to the archives on blogtalkradio.com, False Reformation, and catch up on those ar archives. Continue to follow along in our study of the Heidelberg Disputation. Now, if what I am saying is true, about this document. Why isn't it out there more? I mean, granted, most Christians, most evangelicals, probably haven't even heard of the Heidelberg Disputation. Why is that? Well, the reason is, is because Martin Luther's Heidelberg Disputation had 40 theses, 12 of which uh, deal directly with world philosophy. Uh, it becomes apparent that there was some kind of bone of contention that was major in the Reformation that was Plato versus Aristotle. Now in the document, uh, Luther primarily rags on Aristotle and doesn't, uh, I, as I recall, doesn't mention Plato specifically. But Luther was part of the Augustinian order, um, which was uh, exclusively Neoplatonist via St. Augustine. Um, Luther and Calvin were, were rabid followers of St. Augustine, who was an avowed Neoplatonist. Um, for instance, Calvin, uh, who of course wrote the Calvin Institutes, which is a uh, articulation of Luther's Heidelberg Disputation, quotes Saint Augustine more than four hundred times in the Calvin Institutes, which is about a th roughly a thousand pages. So I think I figured out one time that uh, Saint Augustine is quoted by. Uh, or I'm, yeah, 
St. Augustine is quoted by Calvin on average every 2.25 pages of the Calvin Institutes. So, <clears throat> what really s sparked the Reformation was um, the Catholic Church started to be influenced by Thomism uh, in the 13th century. And um, so, you know, 16th century, you know, 15-something, the Reformation starts coming along. And this is why uh, the Catholic Church started shifting towards, um, more towards an integration of, of Aristotelism philosophy with theology. And that was the real bone of contention in the Reformation. And the Heidelberg Disputation, though, is a brilliant uh, articulation of true Reformed ideology and the Reformation, uh, even as we know it today in its contemporary form in Protestantism, has not swayed from that doctrine, document and its principles in the least. I mean, everything flows out of that document. But yet, that document isn't out there uh, up front and foremost for this very reason. Uh, these 12 theses out of 40 clearly expose in plain daylight what the Protestant Reformation was really about. Uh, it was a contention um, in regard to world philosophy and what is revealed in the reading of the, of the document um, is that uh, you know sola script, script, scripture or scripture alone uh, was really not uh, the crux of the Reformation. Uh, contention over world philosophy, um, you know, and how reality itself is interpreted was really the bone of contention. Okay? Well, I just want to do this short little video because it was brought to my attention by a Facebook friend. Um, it was on the newsreel, coming right off of our latest lesson of the Heidelberg Disputation last night, where we're talking about uh, Martin Luther's construct in regard to mortal and venial sin. And basically what it gets right down to, what Luther propagated, is this whole idea that you can't be saved... Uh, unless you approach every act of mankind, whether that whether we're talking about lost or saved people, where all works of mankind, whether perceived as good or evil, must be approached with the fear that they are mortal sons or unforgiven uh, for unforgiven sons. So if the Christian, quote, unquote, um, approaches every act in life and every experience uh, in life, uh, knowing that condemnation for that act uh, is at hand and therefore looks upon every act performed by a Christian in fear of condemnation, then every act by a Christian, whether obviously sinful or apparently good, or some kind of act that would gain merit with God, that if we look upon all of those acts with fear that we could be condemned for them, then all of our acts are in fact venial sin which can be forgiven. And that forgiveness can only be found in the institutional church under the auspices of reformed elders. Okay, we looked at this in some detail uh, last night. So, we're going to watch a, a, a video here that, that was actually... Uh, and, okay, 
stop. Why is this so important? Because this is important because Christians and evangelicals in general, not understanding their roots, function in a certain way that's driving people away and throwing cold water on the gospel. Why? Because it's a stupid ideology and people aren't going to buy into it. Okay? And coming right off of our lesson on the radio program last night in regard to theses 8 through 10, we find an excellent example of this uh, on Facebook, which I have a love-hate affair with, but for stuff like this, I absolutely love it. Let's go to the article that was brought to my attention in regard to the to the horrible mass shooting that took place in North Carolina in Charleston. And here we have the story of a lady named Debbie who uh, spotted the shooter um, and followed him and in some way, uh, shape, or form um, uh, called the police and was directly responsible for getting this guy uh, arrested. Now this is off the atheism resource and here's the comment. They quote Debbie uh, is saying, it was God who made this happen. She said of the credit she received. It didn't have anything to do with Debbie. Um, It don't have nothing to do with Todd. It's all about him. And of course we hear this verbiage uh, constantly. We hear this verbiage constantly. Okay. Um, It wasn't us. We didn't do it. I didn't do it. It was the Holy Spirit. And I at times tell about a, a incident that I went through with a parishioner uh, when I was a pastor who was given like a brand new car by a young couple in the church. She was a single gal um, uh, trying to raise a couple of children and uh, a young couple in the church gave her one of their cars. They had two cars, but this car that they gave her was a nice car. I think a couple of years old, an Impala, just a really nice car. And, um, you know, um, uh, not only do these people or do Christians want to give themselves credit, to give anyone else credit for doing a good work, would be to to also say that you yourself can do a good work. So she told me that no, 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 no. In reality, it wasn't that young couple uh, that gave her the car, and they should not be commended for it in any way, shape, or form. It was God who gave her that card, uh, car. Uh, folks, where does all of this come from? Where does all of this come from? <laughs> it comes from the Heidelberg Disputation. Theses, oh, roughly 4 through through 10. Okay, and then 11 and 12 get into uh, what Luther had to say about free will. It all flows out of this. So what do the atheists have to say about this? Um, uh, I quoted what they, uh, what they said here. Okay, Uh, it's all about him. Uh, Their response is here. Okay, really? So God helped you find the person that shot nine innocent people in one of his houses of worship, but couldn't prevent the shooting in the first place? Wow, your God sucks. That's pretty brutal, but I'm not going to go down and read these other responses. Uh, they're uh, even more brutal. But, unfortunately, uh, the truth hurts. Okay? This kind of stupidity is what throws cold water on the gospel. Okay? Now, 
let's listen to Dubby. Let's go to the link here, and let's listen to Dubby and hear what she has to say about all of this. Okay, so um, basically what we have here, this whole verbiage of uh, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, God did it through me, okay? Uh, so what's, what's that all about? Um, well, <clears throat> as we're learning in the Heidelberg Disputation um, and the uh, authentic uh, Protestant uh, ideology um, what God does um, is only experienced by us okay uh, we in fact uh, really really aren't doing it okay it's only experienced uh, and you get into a lot of philosophy in regard to all of this and uh, you know manifestations so on and so forth but <clears throat> this, again, this ideology that makes no sense whatsoever uh, is what throws cold water on the, on the gospel, okay? And, um, again, there's confusion amongst Christians. They use this verbal, and in many cases, uh, they, um, um, you know, they... Uh, they don't really understand the roots or what they're really saying. Now, if Luther were to be able to watch this video, he would be very proud of Debbie because in the, in the authentic Protestant sense, okay, Debbie is keeping herself saved. Okay? Debbie is keeping herself saved by disavowing any credit for this good act at all. This is the one of the hallmarks of authentic Protestant doctrine. Okay? If Debbie believes that she had any part in doing what she did out of some eternal goodness or infused righteousness into her, that would be mortal, unforgivable sin. But since she disavows anything in of 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 uh, in of um in and of herself uh, at all, uh, what she has done is reduced this to a venial sin that she can now ask forgiveness for and keep herself safe. Folks, that's authentic Protestantism uh, and, the, and the foundational doctrine and ideology of the Reformation, plain and simple, and this is irrefutable. And again, Debbie herself would probably say, that's ridiculous. I, I, I don't think I'm keeping myself saved by disavowing any credit for the act myself. Okay? I just think that God should get all of the glory. Well, this is indicative, that kind of denial is indicative of the intellectual separation of Debbie from the foundational roots. But folks, the results are the same. People look at this, and I know Debbie thinks that she's giving God the glory and showing forth the gospel. Really, she's not. The results are what you see here. Okay? Really? 
Okay, God helped you find the person that shot nine innocent people in one of his houses of worship, but he couldn't prevent the shooting in the first place. Okay, um, you know, we gotta we gotta start thinking more seriously about these things. Now, as Susan, my wife, contributed to the program last night and keeps bringing up what a contradiction this is to the Bible because Paul in fact said in many places in the New Testament hey these servants of the Lord that are that serve others and love others in the church um, they are to be condemned uh, they are to be commended they are to be recognized and honored Elders who do well in studying the Word of God, they're to be given what? Double honor. See? So, this boils down to um, this whole issue of a grammatical interpretation of the Bible versus how the reformers, the heroes of the Protestant faith, uh, approached the Bible and reality in general. Okay? Uh, they approached it allegorically and insisted on a redemptive um, interpretation of our reality. And we're not going to get into that. But the at issue here is not the authority of Scripture and how you interpret Scripture, friends. This is, the, what people don't understand, this is an issue of how we interpret reality, period. Okay? Learn more about it. Turn, uh, tune in to uh, our series on the Heidelberg Disputation. Uh, uh, catch up on the archives. Join our discussion. Um, all, all are invited to join our uh, discussion um, uh, 7 p.m. every Friday night on blogtalkradio.com forward slash for false reformation. Uh, thanks for listening to this short video. Have a wonderful God honor.